Good afternoon, everybody. I just want to start by saying if Coach's last uh, signee didn't put everything in perspective, then I don't know what will. So uh, that was a really cool thing to see and be a part of. I was actually back there listening to it. So congratulations to Gunner and really all of our signees. We're excited to have them and uh, look forward to having them here at K-State as soon as we can. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Start here with Kellis. Yeah, Gene, both, both you and Chris had expressed, you know, the desire to go play in a bowl. So now that you can't do it, I guess how disappointing is it that you, you can't move forward with another game? Well, I, I'm disappointed for our players and coaches. And Kellis, as you know, I've said it before, I just know how hard they have worked all year to get, you know, through 10 games and, and just the ups and downs of the uncertainties throughout the season. You know, it's been very, very difficult, and, and I know they wanted to play, and we wanted to play, and, you know, to get that extra game and that, you know, preparation and development for the young guys was big, but it, it just, as it started to unfold in the last few days with, as Coach mentioned, the positive uh, COVID cases, the contact tracing, and just the number of, you know, of kids that we have injured right now or nursing injuries, it became a safety issue, and and I certainly disappoint. I feel bad for the Bulls. I feel bad for the Big 12. I called Bob Bowles, B and Ed Stewart today, and they said, Gene, you got to do what's best uh, for your program and the safety of our athletes, and they were fine. And, you know, they know it's just a, a crazy year. So, but disappointed for our kids and coaches more than anything. But you felt like they were pretty pumped to have that opportunity until, uh, until just today? Yeah, I, I think they maybe started feeling it a little bit as some of the positives uh, were coming out, and they started – you know, these kids are smart, right? These players understand and they started looking at numbers and, you know, realized that it might be a, a tough thing. And then the, again, just as, as Chris mentioned, you know, the uncertainty of what well, we're going to test again on Monday. And, you know, what we didn't want to do is accept a bowl bid and we wanted to give the Bulls an opportunity if we weren't going to play to know that well before we, we hit Sunday. So that's why we came to the conclusion that we did. We just, we just didn't think it was going to be a, a, a safe opportunity for our, for our team. All right, thanks, Gene. Uh-huh. Derek? Yeah, Gene, uh, seniors can return, you know, next year, obviously, because they get the free year, but they won't count against the 85 scholarship limit. So, in essence, you'd be paying out more scholarship money than typical. Is that something you've discussed, and how much free reign or freedom does Coach have? Yeah, uh, no, it's a good question and a fair question. And we've actually been working on this uh, probably for several weeks now. Uh, Darren, our compliance associate for compliance, has put together with with conversations with coach of, of who we thought might come back and what the what the dollar impact that's going to be. Um, you know, we we haven't limited that just because we obviously want to make sure these athletes have a chance to come back just like we did for our spring sports last year. Um, our other fall sports don't have a lot of uh, senior athletes um, that have the potential to come back, so. You know, our numbers are, I think, are going to be manageable uh, depending on what that senior number is. Um, so we're working through it. We kind of have a, a number in place. And once he gets that final count and we know who for sure, we'll, we'll manage it. But it's, you know, it's something we just need to make sure we take care of these kids if they want to come back. When you made that 10-game schedule, one, were you anticipating being able to play all 10 games without interruption? And two, are you – getting back the same amount of revenue that you anticipated or planned on? Um, no, first, the answer to the first question, no. I would have thought we'd have been fortunate to play seven games, six or seven, and if we got anything above seven, that was going to be, in my opinion, a very successful season. And, and so we were able to get to 10. As we, we know not every uh, you know, Big 12 opponent or really any conference was able to fulfill their season, which has been kind of fun to – watch unfold on the college football playoff selection stuff. But, um, you know, revenue-wise, no, we're not getting the number of things, uh, number of revenue dollars that we thought we were going to get, but it's been better than anticipated, if that makes any sense. Uh, we obviously knew we weren't going to get a 12-game TV revenue package. Uh, we had uh, scheduled for over 50 games for the conference. I believe we hit that. And so we're going to get what we'd hoped for. Um, how the the bowl games play out into that. Obviously, we're going to get, you know, two teams potentially up to the New Year's Six Bowls. Obviously, the Big 12 winner will go up to New Year's Six and potentially a second one. 
uh, that would be helpful in terms of TV revenue. So we'll see where it all uh, pans out. And then of course you got basketball as a part of it too. So um, it, the, we do have some payments in already and we anticipate uh, to not reach our numbers, but uh, certainly better than we anticipated. Right. Hey, Gene, how you doing? Good, how are you? Hey, doing pretty well. Um, in, in terms of the, this most recent testing that kind of went into deciding not to go after a, a bowl bid, uh, I know when the Iowa State game seemed like it was in jeopardy, uh, you know, Coach Plyman mentioned that he was more worried about meeting the threshold for the positional thing. Was, was this the case here, or was this also actually just having 53 players to have, have a full roster? Well, I don't know, again, where our numbers were, but I know a couple of the key positions we were below the threshold, um, and particularly one area, I think it was the defensive tackles that we were between injuries and COVID and contact tracing. I, I think we had two D tackles that were, put, were gonna be able to participate in practice and whether we got those other guys back was questionable. Uh, I know we were short in the tight end position. Now, again, that wasn't one of the threshold positions, but, um, you know, again, between injuries and, and then you, you've got, you know, a couple of our seniors have, you know, indicated that they're going to go to the NFL and great for them. They, you know, had great careers here. And so when you add all those pieces up between injuries, COVID, contact tracing, the, the seniors that have uh, decided to move on, uh, the numbers just got to a point where we thought we were going to jeopardize the potential safety of our kids. And it just, and, and we just didn't want to do that, not only to our team, but the Big 12 and, and the bowl experience as well. Gene, I know like during the season when you're preparing for a game, it's, it's three tests a week. Is, has that still been the case since the regular season ended, or do you guys not test as often now? You know, I think since the Texas game, we've, we've gone to one test a week, but I have to double check that with Matt. I know we tested after the Texas game, and then once we got into our kind of our development practices, I think it was one test a week, but I'd have to double check that. Yeah, I was just curious. I didn't know if you knew when this, this, this most recent round of testing was. Was it Monday or was it was last week? What's today? It was uh, Tuesday. I think they tested on Sunday, and we found out yesterday was when the numbers started coming in. And I, I guess my last thing, Gene, uh, is there anything this is tied to kind of like when that first outbreak happened? I know some guys maybe were doing the playing video games at each other's places. Was there anything like that, that for these testing? No, these yeah. these athletes have been really, really good mm -hmm. about doing the right thing and, mm -hmm. you know, staying within their bubble, whether that's with their roommates or their, you know, position groups. Uh, it, it wasn't anything like that. These these football teams and even all of our other fall sports were really committed to getting through the season. I think they've done a nice job, and I don't think it was anything other than um, just timing more than anything. Thank you, Gene. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Else. Is the hope at least right now that you guys will be back to a normal 12 game schedule next season? <laughs> uh, yes, it is. I mean, it, you know, you know, th there is a very small light at the end of the tunnel with the, you know, the vaccine and, and, but we still have to be diligent throughout the rest of the winter and the spring and you know, our spring sports uh, will start coming back in January and, and getting ready and we'll be testing them um, just like we have with our fall sports and, you know, our athletes will be the last if we, when we get the vaccine, they'll be the last ones that'll, um, you know, be tested just because of their youth and their, you know, their ability to, to manage the, the, you know, COVID. So I don't think a vaccine is going to be in play for athletes at all. But I do think, you know, between the vaccine nationwide and hopefully the numbers going down that we'll be in a position um, for a regular 12 game season. Now I say that and back in April or May, I said, oh yeah, we're going to be fine come fall. And guess what? I wasn't even close to being accurate. So um, I'm, anymore, you just hard to predict with this thing. All right. Well, I still try, wanted to ask. Thanks. Steve. <laughs> Got two hands raised. We'll do those starting with John. Yeah, along those same lines, Gene, uh, do you have a plan mapped out for spring football or is that going to be wait and see and, and kind of determine how things go? Yeah, I think it's a wait and see. I, I'm sure Chris has, you know, planned for a regular start of spring and um, same number, what is it, 20 practices and 15 practices in 20 days. And I, I'm sure all of that is in his mind and the coach's mind they're planning for. I mean, obviously they're going to start their winter workouts. Uh, you know, we're bringing them back. They'll quarantine. 
uh, when they get back, uh, just like our other athletes will, they'll be tested before they can come back in the facility. So the protocols will be the same that they were in the fall. So we'll quarantine them, we'll test them. If they're uh, negative, then they'll be able to come in and start working out. So all of that process is, is already planned out. Um, and we'll just have to monitor it th throughout this winter and spring. But, you know, again, our goal is to get back to normal operations. Um, and that was part of the decision on the, on the bowl is, um, you know, we had kids that needed some surgeries that if we wanted them to be ready for the spring, uh, we probably needed to do that sooner rather than later. Appreciate it, Gene. Thanks. Derek? Yeah, how much input as an administrator for a university you guys have on the recruiting calendar? And do you foresee that, that the dead period ending at any time soon? Because obviously it's extended through April 15th. Yeah, you know, we obviously have the committees, the, you know, there's oversight committees in football, there's the management council that, that really set all that. But as ADs, you know, we have a representative on both the management council and the, and the football oversight and the basketball oversight committee within the Big 12. So as we have a meeting of ADs, we give them our opinion of what our thoughts are. And, you know, I think what you'll see is it will open up, but I will tell you things, I don't know that we'll go back to where coaches are going out you know, 24-7, 365 days, that's a little bit of an overstretch. But I just think you're going to see a lot more um, virtual recruiting. I think we'll probably get back to where we'll have uh, athletes being able to come on campus, either for official or unofficial visits. But I think the amount of time coaches spend on the road, we're going to take a serious look at. And as you know, we've signed 14 athletes. Schools across the country are signing athletes. Basketball is signed, you know, so – Recruiting is still continuing, and, and there are some coaches that will tell you that it's working out pretty well. Um, they get to spend a little bit more time, and so I would, wouldn't be shocked if we see the numbers of times coaches can go out will be limited, and we'll also limit um, the amount of, of athletes coming in, and it'll be more virtual just because it's working out so far. And, 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 but I, I do see there's a lot more conversation about it. But as ADs, we certainly have input, no question. The last one here, Ryan. Hey, hey, Dean, I wanted to jump back in. I know this might sound like, like an odd question, but in a way, so I'm going to try to phrase it correctly. For you, is it a little bit of a relief when you see the numbers of guys now who are transferring at other programs? Because I think just there was maybe a narrative, fair or not, that when K-State just had so many guys going in the transfer portal, oh, is there some kind of problem at K-State? Whereas I think now KU is overtaking you guys in that number and – it's basically that K-State just had more guys transfer in season while other programs had their players wait till the end of the year. Well, yeah, I mean, I think um, – I don't know if it's relief necessarily. I think it, you're looking at massive numbers mm -hmm. of over 1,000 already, um, and I think it's a combination of things. I wasn't concerned about it because I, you know, understand you – and know, I talk to Chris on a regular basis. I talk to our coaches. You know, we talk to some of our athletes about the whys – you know, between COVID, between the additional year, between not playing as much, there, was, there wasn't anything that, you know, I was ever really concerned about. And I knew, quite frankly, that this was going to happen across the country with other programs. We were going to see large numbers of, of people going into the transfer portals. All just started sooner. So, um, you know, my concern is there's not necessarily for our K-State athletes that went in the portal, but all athletes, is they're going to be sitting there – potentially without a scholarship offer here over the next few months. Uh, and, and what are they going to do? And where are they going to go? And they, you know, potentially walked away with an opportunity that they had for something that they might've thought was greener pasture, pastures and it's not going to be the case. So, um, but this, I will tell you, I won't be shocked if this is something that we will deal with now that the transfer portal exists, that we're going to give them a one-time transfer exception come January that you're going to see this on a probably regular basis across the country, just like you have in basketball.